Hey guys, here's an update on my LifePo 4 battery build. 100 amp hours. I've got it all in the front on my gem car. The BMS is a JK BMS. On the side, I put plastic over it to keep it uh, somewhat protected. Uh, same thing here with the cells. I put plastic over it. And I did that by using a router and I put a little channel on both sides of the of the two by sixes uh, the top and bottoms of the box is this same material here it's like uh, 3 8 or I don't even think that's half inch pressure treated uh, plywood that I had here and then I just set it in there and I strapped it in to keep it where it needs to be I took the uh, original um, cutoff switch from the back seat and put it here on the side um, that was a little tricky because now this plastic won't slide up until I remove this because it's in the way but I wanted to have a cutoff right here on the battery and uh, I couldn't go any taller this uh, the hood here this part of the hood sits currently on top of this part of the reason why the hood doesn't close all the way it's close, but yeah, I've got the BMS. You see all the red wires in there, wired in, front and back. So this is a 36 and a 36 volt, um, 12S, 12S, all with one BMS and uh, connected together in series. And um, WVA 24S. And then I put this Anderson plug on here so that I could unplug it and pull the battery out if needed. Okay, so there's that. This thing works great. So let's go ahead and put the hood back on. And uh, you can, oh, let's talk about my lift for a second. I raised the front four inches up and two inches forward, but I later realized. I really only needed to do the two inches forward. Um, I built this here bracket for the front cradle of the of the motor, so it would move forward and then down uh, from where it was previously mounted. Let's see, can I show that? Let's see, here's the the cradle, and it was up under here, so yeah, it moved two inches forward. As you can see. The two inches forward allow for these 26 inch wheels to not rub when I turn. Before doing that, 23 inch wheels would rub. Um, okay, everything else is stock. The battery is lithium LifePo 4. The charger is the original Delta Q charger and I hadn't changed anything. I only removed the long cables that went to the back. I got rid of all of that. And so these two cables here from the battery, one goes to the big fuse, the other one goes to the controller. That's it. All the other wires that were extra going to the back were removed. And I am currently working on a sound system, which is not done, to go in the back. I'm going to put a big subwoofer there, 12-inch square subwoofer and four speakers. And uh, that'll be another day's video. In regards to the JK24S BMS, seems to be working well. Um, even I have this extra screen that I purchased with it here. You can see and a button to wake it up. When you wake up the BMS, you can see your state of charge. I'm at 84%, 79.75 volts. Uh, bottom left says average well, uh, volts per cell is 3.32 and uh, yeah and that's not too bad and like I said I can charge it with the original Delta Q charger mine is non programmable here's a cord for it and it charges at 11 amps up to 81 volts so it doesn't it doesn't push it to its limits but it works I could upgrade the charger to something with more amps and a higher voltage, but honestly, that's fine for now. The BMS will limit 
the voltage going in, the amps going in, and uh, and it won't let the charger harm your, your cells. And so don't let people fool you to think, oh, using the wrong algorithm and it's going to ruin your batteries or something. If you got the BMS, it's going to keep you it's going to regulate everything coming in and it's going to have alarms and cut off your voltage completely going in if it senses anything is misaligned or harmful for your cells. Okay, after the fact, I would say I should have and I still could make the battery pack sit about an inch lower because you can see my hood doesn't quite go all the way down. It's about an inch too high. It still clips on, the hinges had to be removed, and I just have these bungee cords running around the front, and that's not ideal or pretty, but yeah, there is that. But as far as the lift goes, you can see, I've got a lot of clearance on the top of the wheel. I really didn't need to lift the car at all. I only needed to move the suspension forward uh, at least two inches to clear the wheels. The back, I did nothing but took off the old uh, bolt-on mounts for the fenders and put these wheels on. That's just everything else is factory on there. I have a, a truck bed I picked up from a, a, a two-seater two version that I'm going to modify to fit on there, and that's going to be cool. All right, hey, let's uh, let's take this thing for a little ride. And I'll show you guys what we got. Some people ask me if 100 amp hours is enough. I, I think it is. Uh, let's see, bring on the display. You see, I've still got 79.76 volts, 84%. Okay. This gem is still 100% stock with the 25 mile an hour uh, regulator on it. So. But the bigger wheels give me more speed. So let's floor it here, I'm moving right up. Hard to see, it says 100% battery, 22, 23 miles an hour on the odometer, but it's really more like 27 miles an hour. And this thing was pulling on the screen there, I can see 70 amps were being pulled from the, uh, through the BMS. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around. Again, just here on my little road. All right, 1.6 amps. If you can see that on the top right, here we go. Watch that. Floor. So we're 110 amps. This thing goes about 30 miles an hour. Um, I have seen it jump up to about 275, 80 amps at times when I've got multiple passengers from a dead stop, but I, I get a lot of range. I get probably over 30 miles range with that battery on one charge, and that's just great. And I've been driving this thing all over since I finished the battery. So, yeah, it, it moves. And it works great. I haven't had any issues with it. Um, a fully charged pack is still under the uh, over voltage range for the uh, for the gem cars controller, so we're still good there. And um, and uh, I just can't say enough about how how happy I am that it's. And it's working out. It's in the front. I do like the weight over the front wheels, but I realize not every not everyone can do that with their jet car. Some have the controller and stuff up over the front wheels. This thing has, I would say, considerable amount of torque. Um, even full of people and passengers, it's governed at 25 miles an hour. So, but if you get a magic magnet or something like that. You, I'm sure you could go a lot faster. Um, the little screen comes on whenever you're driving, so you can you can keep an eye on your state of charge. I don't let it go below 67 volts. I know that the Gem Car controller will cut you off at 66 volts. 
Um, even though the, the LiPo 4 could actually go lower than that, uh, you won't be able to with the gem car controller. And, uh, 86.7, I think, is the uh, maximum that you can charge the battery. And the gem car controller won't give you an over voltage until you're like, I don't remember what it was, 88. Um, volts, something like that. So you're still good even if you fully charge that 24S pack. Like I said, this thing's got torque. It, it peels out on pavement even with the weight on the front. So, wow. Uh, charging the, the batteries, I use if I use the Delta Q charger that's on board that was for my AGM batteries, it gives me about 11 amps charging and it takes you know I don't know usually four or five hours to charge I picked up this cheap Chinese 25 amp charger that will charge it all the way up to 87.6 volts um, and then I realized it was breaking popping the breakers in my house because I didn't have 25 amp breakers and my electrician buddy said don't use those uh, regular outlets for that so I'm not done here but I've got this 30 amp wire to a 30 amp breaker on a 110 volt outlet that I'm gonna mount out here on the side of the house just for charging on 25 amps but ultimately my plan is to create a solar um, carport gazebo type thing and charge it at 80 amps with solar. DC to DC direct. Part of my issue is finding a solar controller that will do a 72 volt battery. There's not a whole lot of them. And it looks like I could order something off Alibaba or AliExpress. This Victron is an amazing piece of machinery here, but it only does up to 48 volt batteries. So that's another project for another day, the solar charging portion of this project. But the LifePo 4 pack is great. The lift so far is great. Uh, you can see the cradle down here. I just extended that four inches and uh, brought it down and forward two inches. And that worked out really well. I actually just cut the old one. Um, and then I welded a new plate over the top of both and uh, that worked and I just welded it on the car it's probably not the greatest but and then the front of the mount you can see here that, that where it mounts right here let's see if I can get that on video the bolts underneath can you see that the front of this plate here is bolted onto that channel but it used to be bolted onto the top of the aluminum right there see the hole that's where this front part was mounted and so that rectangular channel is all I needed for the front and the steering I just cut it put a piece of steel rod inside of it and rewelded it it's still pretty ugly uh, forget that wire that's nothing <laughs> it's just hanging there should probably put tape on that um, but anyway, yeah, there's uh, everything else is just stock, original stuff. So I actually might bring the front end back down um, a few inches, leave it forward, but move it back down. I don't need all this clearance here. It, not only is it ugly, it uh, yeah, it serves no purpose. Back here, I need the clearance. Um, I did have to extend the shocks, and I should probably show you that, and move them forward. Uh, you can see here, um, the shocks were mounted here, and now they're mounted here. Four inches down, two inches forward, and I just used some angle iron and added an extra piece on it so that I could bolt it on. A couple of bolts here to keep it stable, but uh, yeah, that wasn't too hard but I definitely had to get creative in making this bracket for the shocks. I'm really glad I put the battery up over the front 
because the, my front end on this O2 needs the weight for the suspension or it will be really bouncy. With the batteries out of the back, it's a little bouncy in the back, not too terrible. Um, considering extending the frame a little bit and leaving the shocks where they are, and that will actually uh, change the the uh, the leverage on the on the back end and make it a little less bouncy. Kind of like putting a longer handle on your um, on your ratchet. Again, guys, sorry it took me so long to give you updates. Um, I'll try and post more videos and keep these projects rolling. I do have a second gem just laying around over here with no batteries in it. All stock, two-seater that uh, I'm going to work on next. So my solar charging station should be equipped with the ability to charge multiple low voltage EVs. Alright, well thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. I've got a stereo project in the works too. Multiple amps and subwoofers and uh, equalizers. Multiple speakers going in. And even some rock lights. So, stay tuned for that. Got some LED taillights to go on the back of the box. Stay tuned for that. And we got the box itself that's going to go have to be custom mounted on there. Stay tuned for that. Planning on putting a lift and these 26 inch tires on that two seater. Stay tuned for that. And I'm looking forward to creating a roof rack for the top in a creative way. I might actually take apart this cage and use these rings that are 40 by 48 to create my roof rack um, which would fit perfect on the top of my four seater four seater so stay tuned and uh hopefully i can get those videos uh up and posted for you soon great have a great day bye